Okay, first step of doing the upper body of the werewolf costume. I want to give it a slightly exaggerated shoulder look. So what I did was I had a compression shirt and I cut four pieces of foam uh, that's going to go underneath the uh, fur. Basically two shoulder pad pieces right here and two back muscle pieces here and here right there. Uh, I didn't worry too much about rounding these edges because the fur is going to be over this. Um, I already tried the mask and the mask is going to be also layered over this. And then with the shirt on, you're not going to be able to tell that that's blocky right there. So my next step will be adding the fur over the shirt. Okay, what I did here basically was just cut out a very generic uh, half t-shirt sleeveless design out of the fur. And what I'm going to do is take this and drape it. here to see how much more the neck area I may have to cut to get this to lay over properly. Now what I'll be doing is hot gluing, which is how I attach the foam to the shirt. I forgot to add that. Um, and it's been a few days and it's held quite well unless you really want to rip it off it's going to stay on there. Uh, the fur on the front will be attached to the front of the pad like that and then the back I will trim, cut, and attach to the shirt. Same method using hot glue so let me grab the scissors, the hot glue gun, and start trimming and gluing. And we'll see how it turns out. Okay, real briefly here. <clears throat> I already glued the fur to the shoulder pad area. And also to the back. It's hard to see because the fur blends very, very well. There's actually a fold here where this is attached. This is only glued to the foam. It's not attached to the shirt itself. There's going to be a reason for that, especially with this being a compression shirt. But there's the shoulders and the back. Now the next step will be for me to actually try this on so I can see how much of this I need to cut out and what further trimming needs to be done for this to be wrapped around. Okay, I already tried the shirt on and with a little bit of help I was able to hot glue the excess fur that was loose to the side of the shirt. The reason why I didn't do it to the shirt when it was on the mannequin form is because I need the shirt to be stretched to my body size. And if you leave it on the mannequin, there's a chance you're going to get too much or too little. And when you put on the compression shirt, it's going to stretch and it's either going to be baggy or it's going to end up being too tight and the fur is going to rip right back off of it. This way, it's a perfect fit. Now I did leave a little bit of loose material right here. Uh, when I put it on it just falls right back down like that which is fine. It allows some movement without any kind of stress. It helps with it being glued down the shirt. Uh, the next step will be for me to cut a piece and we will do it to the front. 
Okay, on this part, I cut a, another piece of fur just like I did that you saw at the very beginning in that same design. Uh, I then took it, laid it over the shoulder area again, hot glued it on each side to attach it. It's not perfectly straight here, and I do have kind of a, oh, there's extra fur. Uh, I do have it a little bit crooked, but you're not gonna see this. That's one reason why I also left an extra long opening here at the neck is the mask has extra fur that comes down to about here. So this part's gonna be covered, as is most of this anyway, due to the shirt that's gonna be worn. So what I will do now is put this on and start gluing the sides and trimming to make this more of a shirt. Cross your fingers, see how it turns out. And here we are with the front fur section now attached to the compression shirt. I have it hot glued up here to the existing fur part that we already did and here. Uh, it is now attached down the side. It is loose here in the front to allow me to get the compression shirt on without much uh, pressure and tension on this that might cause it to rip off the compression shirt. It's glued up here on the side seam. Now I do have a bit of extra here that overhangs from the sleeve and that helps with the bulking out of the shoulder area. I actually already tried this on with the shirt and it gives it the effect that uh, I was really looking for. Very happy with how it turned out and I'll be showing you that shortly. Uh, also, this section here is not as wide when I wear it. It's probably only about this much, which, like I said, is going to be covered because the mask hair comes down to about here. So, there it is. That is the basically the fur undershirt that I will be wearing for the werewolf costume. Okay, I wanted to show this just ever so briefly. Uh, I got my white button-down shirt, and I had already cut, or rather ripped, the sleeves because I want to show the werewolf arms that I actually showcased in one of my other videos that you can check out. They are the arms I'm going to be wearing with this costume. Uh, Goodwill store. Three bucks. Brand new. This one was never worn. It still has the wrinkles from what was in the package. Goodwill and Salvation Army is the best untapped resource for costume clothing if you're going to be putting something together. It beats going paying full retail or if you don't have something in your closet. Anyway, uh, I got an extra oversized shirt because I knew it was going to have to be bulked up and I couldn't have it tight on me. And this is pretty much how I'm going to be wearing it. But the reason why I did so much fur is this allows me now to weather and rip the shirt and it will allow the fur to show through underneath. Uh, I plan on doing some rips here by the seams so it will allow the fur to pop through. Uh, also straight down the back a little you know to show that my upper body area did grow and expand and cause the shirt to rip to give it a nice effect. I'm not going to have to worry about you know oh there's no fur under there. It's going to give it a nice illusion of actually be in a complete bodysuit so all right stay tuned and we're going to be finishing the whole upper body and then we'll be starting on the legs okay i went ahead and got my seam ripper and added a few tears to where i think uh the shirt should be torn if the upper body was expanding and contorting and whatnot <coughs> excuse me so I put a little tear here in the shoulder area, there, over here as well, a little rip there, and actually went ahead and did a couple tears here as if during the transformation the claws already started coming out and you're 
tearing away, ripping your shirt open, and just a nice little effect. Plus, you know, you don't want the Wolfman to have nice clean clothes. You know, he's going to have a little bit of rips in there on the back because the back is expanding. I put a little rip there down the center and a little one over there too. I think that's all I'm going to do. I don't want to overdo it. You know, once everything is on and you get the total effect, you know, just enough of the little details. I'm still debating right now on whether or not to add the blood stains. If I'm going to do a bloody version Wolfman or just a recently transformed Wolfman who hasn't done anything yet. I don't know. We'll see. Stay tuned.